Week 1, Lesson 8, Punch Magazine. Created in 1841 by Henry Mayhew and Ebenezer Landless, Punch Magazine lasted over 161 years. It was a satirical magazine that, much like the New Yorker is today, was known for its comics with captions at the bottom. Punch Magazine had a mascot and editor, Mr. Punch, striking it solo after his success in the Punch and Judy shows. To this day, Punch Magazine remains the most successful comic periodical in history. The first time that the word cartoon was ever written was in Punch Magazine. The papers The Times and News of the World used pieces from Punch Magazine as filler, since Punch would freely give away their articles as a promotional tactic. The circulation of the magazine peaked in 1947-48, to 48, with roughly 175,000 to 180,000 sales of any given issue. They helped legitimize comics as an art form and helped associate the combination of words and pictures with comedy in the general public's consciousness. Even the ads here say, sold by all booksellers. It says that the magazine is of a high enough quality to be sold among literature. This is a magazine trying to legitimize itself. So, what type of comics did they have? Highbrow comics. Let's look at this one. Jack Bull, the one dressed like Humpty Dumpty, is telling Uncle Sam, You do what's right, my son, or I'll blow you out of the water. To understand this comic, you need to understand that Jack Bull is Britain's unofficial personification, the same way Uncle Sam is America's unofficial personification. We see that in this picture, Jack Bull, almost twice the size of Uncle Sam, is giving the impression that he is more powerful. He is standing in front of the Union Jack, the official flag of Britain, and has a Britannia shirt, just so that there is no mistaking what this guy is supposed to represent, Great Britain. Now, let's look at Uncle Sam. He's well armed and has two pistols, yet he's pretty scrawny. He hasn't even grown into his boots yet. The cartoon is meant to give the impression that Uncle Sam, and therefore America, is weak. And just to hammer in that Sam here represents America, he is holding the American flag. Now notice the title of this cartoon, Watch Out for Squalls. A squall is a sudden increase in wind speed. So, the title is telling us that America can't try and grow too fast, or Britain will put it in its place through a show of force. Here's a simpler comic or cartoon, a warning to enthusiasts. We see a misshapen skeleton on display, whose bones have evolved to ride a penny-farthing bicycle, or is known by most today, that bicycle with the really big front wheel. Now, this comic was published in 1889, as Charles Darwin's theories on evolution were changing the way humans understood the world. It's unclear if the comic is mocking Darwin's theories or mocking bicycle enthusiasts. Maybe it's mocking both. As you can see, not any simpleton would be able to figure out what these comics were trying to say. You had to understand modern events and the significance of the symbols used in the comics in order to understand the jokes. Whereas anyone who could read could understand Rodolf Topfer's cartoons, this one made the readers connect the pieces in order to understand the punchline.